Henry Tandy was the highest decorated private in the British Army to survive World War I. During a battle near a French village on the 28th of September 1918, Tandy had a wounded and unarmed German soldier in his sights. Although he had his gun pointed right at him, Tandy chose not to pull the trigger. Lowering his gun, Tandy met the eyes of the wounded soldier, who nodded once in thanks before scampering off. It has long been alleged that the injured soldier was none other than a 29-year-old Adolf Hitler. The question remains, if Private Tandy had taken that shot, would World War II have been averted and thus millions of lives saved? The idea that a single pull of a trigger by a lone British soldier could so drastically have altered future world events is fascinating. Hitler himself later claimed the story to be true. But in recent decades, new evidence suggests that the story is perhaps infused with a little more legend than previously believed. Private Henry Tandy was born on the 30th of August 1891 in Warwickshire, England. Orphaned at an early age, he enlisted into the Green Howards Regiment in 1907. After the outbreak of World War I, he would fight in the Battle of Ypres in October 1914, the Battle of the Somme in October 1916, and the Battle of Passchendaele in November 1917. During August and September of 1918, Tandy led two raids in which he crossed no man's land to bomb German trenches and free wounded prisoners from captivity. For his efforts, Tandy was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal and the Military Medal. After transferring to the 5th Battalion, Duke of Wellington's West Riding Regiment, Tandy again demonstrated such bravery under fire that he was awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest and most prestigious of the British military honours system. Tandy earned the Victoria Cross for his involvement in the 5th Battle of Ypres on the 28th of September 1918. The advance of Tandy's battalion had been halted by a fierce German counterattack. Tandy was able to take out an enemy machine gun position that was pinning the British down. Along with some others, he repaired a damaged canal bridge while still under heavy enemy fire to allow the advance to continue. Later that evening, Tandy and eight of his fellow soldiers were surrounded by overwhelming enemy numbers. Tandy then led a bayonet charge, driving 37 German soldiers back into the hands of his own battalion. He did all this despite twice being wounded. It was some time during this battle near a village in northern France that Private Tandy is said to have spared the life of Adolf Hitler. It would however be many years later that the legend would be made famous by none other than the Führer himself. In 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain travelled to Adolf Hitler's infamous Alpine retreat, the Berghof, in a last ditch effort to broker peace in Europe. While there, Chamberlain noticed a painting hanging on the wall. The painting, by Italian artist Fortunino Mattagna, depicted Tandy carrying a wounded comrade at the First Battle of Ypres in 1914. When asked about it, Hitler is believed to have pointed to the man in the painting, saying, That man came so near to killing me that I thought I should never see Germany again. Providence saved me from such devilishly accurate fire as those English boys were aiming at us. That sounds a rather English thing to have said. And the painting was a strange article for someone such as Hitler to have had, for it glorified the Allied victory in World War I. When Germany was defeated, Hitler had been recovering from a mustard gas attack in hospital. The despondency and disillusionment he felt when he learned of the signing of the armistice by Germany would forever shape Hitler's later life and career. As the story goes, Hitler asked Chamberlain to send his regards to Private Tandy and to thank him for sparing his life. Chamberlain promised to do so, undertaking to telephone Tandy at his earliest convenience. Making good on his word, Chamberlain is said to have telephoned Tandy but managed only to speak to a young male relative of his. With all the mystery surrounding the supposed encounter between Private Tandy and Hitler, Dr. David Johnson was determined to set the record straight in the biography he wrote of the British war hero's life. Dr. Johnson's view is that there is sufficient evidence to demonstrate that Hitler's claim to have been spared by Private Tandy was a pure fabrication. The first issue to cast doubt on the truth of the story is that Tandy, as depicted in the painting in 1914, would have looked very different in the heat of a battle in 1918. Both men would no doubt have been disheveled, covered in mud and possibly also blood. The biggest discrepancy in the story, however, is the date on which the encounter is alleged to have occurred. According to Dr. Johnson's research, it is virtually certain that the two men never actually crossed paths. 
On the 17th of September 1918, Hitler's unit was moved about 50 miles north of Tandy's position in northern France. Further, documents held at the Bavarian State Archive confirm that Hitler was on leave between the 25th and 27th of September. This means that at best, Hitler was returning or had just returned to his unit which was many miles away at the time. Another hole in the story is the alleged telephone call Chamberlain is said to have made in 1939. Henry Tandy was living in Coventry at the time where he worked for the Triumph Motor Company. The archives of British telecommunications reveal that there were only three telephone lines registered in the area, none of which were at Tandy's home. Despite Neville Chamberlain's penchant for keeping detailed records and diary entries of his day-to-day -day activities, he never made any mention of the Tandy affair. If the story is all a fabrication, why would Hitler have made it up? Was he confused or was he motivated by some other reason to lie? Dr. Johnson speculates that the story was just part of Hitler's grand mythologizing of himself. If his life were to have been spared by an enemy, who better than one of its most highly decorated soldiers? Johnson says, with his godlike self-perception, the story added to his own myth, that he had been spared for something greater, that he was somehow chosen. His story embellished his reputation nicely. In Mein Kampf, Hitler wrote that a divine force watched over him during World War I, including when a mysterious voice instructed him to leave a trench which was promptly thereafter hit by a grenade that killed some of his comrades. The idea that Hitler's leadership of Germany was providential was a strong theme of Nazi propaganda. But we haven't yet heard from Tandy himself about the incident. Could he confirm whether or not it happened? Tandy first heard of the story via the grapevine. He confirmed that in battle he did spare the lives of German soldiers who were injured or unarmed, as any compassionate soldier with a modicum of respect for the rules of war would do, but in 1939 when the story came to light, he could not confirm whether Hitler had been one of those he spared. When interviewed by a local newspaper, Tandy said, According to them, I've met Adolf Hitler. Maybe they're right, but I can't remember him. In a subsequent interview, Tandy was a little more firm on the issue. He said, If only I had known what he would turn out to be. When I saw all the people and women and children he had killed and wounded, I was sorry to God that I let him go. However, this statement was from an interview Tandy gave shortly after his hometown in Coventry had been leveled by the Luftwaffe in World War II. The emotions of the situation, coupled with the persistent telling of the story as if it were gospel truth, was perhaps enough to convince Tandy that it must have indeed happened. After World War I, Tandy continued to serve in the British Army until his final discharge on the 5th of January 1926. He went on to marry and enjoy a career spanning 38 years at the Triumph Motor Car Company. He died in 1977, aged 86. As interesting as it is to speculate how the killing of Hitler during World War I may have altered the course of world history, it is a pity that Private Henry Tandy's brave exploits were for so long overshadowed by an event which was more legend than fact.